Good morning from the Weather Spirits in Gatwick Airport, wherein I am beginning a trip. I'm calling this my anti buffer bitterness trip. I've ordered a vegan all day brunch because I'm bougie. But it's from a Weather Spirits because I'm also basic. Bonjour from. <clears throat> Edinburgh. I don't know how they say hello regionally here because I'm English and ignorant. So what I mean by my anti-buffer bitterness extravaganza is everyone else is in Canada for Buffer Festival or they've got exciting things coming up or they've just come back from something exciting um, and I haven't been anywhere. And I made a list of places I wanted to visit and I settled on Edinburgh. I've wanted to come for a long time. It was affordable and also, I'm a little bit anxious about travelling on my own. Normally what happens is I go to a place with people and then leave them alone and go off on my own. So I've always at the very least got someone to go home to. This is the first time I'm just in a strange city completely by myself. That's quite exciting. I figured Edinburgh was far away from home, but also technically still home. There is a Starbucks just across the road. And as if to make me feel even more comfortable, uh, my friends are on the telly. So I literally have just arrived. So first things first, I'm going to unpack. And then I'm going to get naked. I have this habit of getting naked as soon as I go into a hotel room. I don't know why. I think it's a marking territory thing. I get naked and climb into the bed. I'm like, ha, this is my home now. Hello. So in the end yesterday, I just went for a little wander around and then I went for a burger at this place called Bread Meets Bread. It was very good. And it was right next to the film house, which is a little indie cinema. The fun fact runs the oldest continually running film festival, the Edinburgh International Film Festival. Anyway, I went and saw Judy. Renee Zellweger is so good. And she sings a few of the songs like live in one take. I had a small cry because Judy Garland just wanted to be loved and no one ever took care of her or anything. And when I say small cry, I mean a trademark Daniel J. Layton feel the tears bubble up, but really smash them down so as not to make a scene. So within minutes of getting off the plane, I saw a man in a kill. As I said, it's never too early for whiskey. And the most picturesque B&M I've ever seen in my life. And that's something I've noticed when I've been walking around is that everything seems to be a little bit pretend I'm going the wrong way. Like the landscapes just seem a little bit too good to be true. And just now I nipped into this gardens because I was like, oh, that's pretty. I'll walk into there. And I see this fucking beautiful mountainside. I say mountainside, it's a big, big hill. Tell me that's a hill. Tell me that is a hill with a little castle stuck on top. And I'm big into castles at the moment. It might be because of a certain medieval show that's just finished in a way that I was quite satisfied with everybody. The other thing I've noticed, I don't think I've gone downhill once the whole time I've been here. I got a tram today. You don't know this about me. Maybe you do. I really like <laughs> transport. I get a genuine kick out of traveling on the buses in London. And someone being like, oh God, I need to get from one place to another. And I'm like, I got you covered, mate. When we went to Paris, I wanted to go on the metro and everyone bullied me because it's just the tube, but French. And it's not just the tube, but French. Half the time you're traveling above rooftops and stuff. And it's like you're flying through the city. It's great. So I got the tram. It was well fun. What? I charged you yesterday. You prick bucket. We're running out of battery. I kept trying to vlog today, but um, it's bloody windy in Scotland. So I thought I'd sit down and recount what happened today, but now my battery's running out. So we'll go for as long as I can, and then when it shuts down, I'll get into bed. First things first. I've admitted defeat. I've busted out the coat. I'm in summer. The weather forecast for the day said it was going to be a light breeze. It light. Basic Londoner can't deal with Scottish weather. I've come for a little walk down the side road because I just thought these buildings were so pretty. Like they're so, they're so pretty. And I just wanted to have a look at them. So basically I'm staring into people's front windows. Do I feel shame? No. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Tonight, I thought I'd go to the theatre, darling. There's a touring production of We Will Rock You, so why not? Oh, that person's house was lovely. I think it was an office, though, so that's fine. Everything is kind of on a whim. I quite like that freedom of like, I'll do whatever I want. I'm on my own. I mean, you got it, you know? You can't not. Oh my God, I've done so much walking. Should we find out exactly how much walking? <laughs> Today, 19,000 steps. And the day before that was 18,000. The day before the Sunday, <laughs> where I was in the house all day, 
Um, yeah. Anyway, theatre tonight. I can't vlog the show, but I'll try and get some footage of inside the theatre. I'm very excited. I basically went in and was like, hello, please can I have the cheapest seat? She was like, just so that you know, um, there aren't, there's not a lift in the building and it's 40 steps down to the sea. I was like, um, you're telling me that in Edinburgh, I'm gonna have to climb some stairs? What a shocker. While I was out, I did a little bookshop crawl. I asked for recommendations and pretty much all of you said the Lighthouse Bookshop. And it was a good recommendation because I walked in and there was a dog immediately in front of me. Turned out her name was Artemis and she sat up and said hello and then followed me round the shop. And then I went to Admirable Book, Admirable Books, Admiral Books. What's it called? Armchair books. It would have taken you 10 seconds to Google it. Which is a second-hand bookshop. They were just everywhere. There were books all over the joint. There were loads of them. But my favourite were these two, like, gigantic tomes, leather-bound tomes of Shakespeare's works, which, it turns out, were from around 1870. I would have bought them, but I wouldn't have been able to lug them back to London, so don't let anyone buy them. Even if they're really nice, don't let anyone. And I'll come back. I will. Because... As I flipped through and I saw Midsummer Night's Dream, there was this picture of <laughs> Puck and the fairies. And I swear to God, that is a face Sammy Paul makes when he's up to mischief. So I have to own those books. I have to. Uh, yes, I've just got out of the shower, but I realized while I was in there that I didn't tell you the most important part of the day. I had haggis. It was fucking delicious. This is one of the joys of walking with no agenda. I just sort of was wondering. I was like, oh, I'm a bit hungry, actually. And I looked slightly off to my right and I noticed this arcade and I went in it and there was a brunch bar called Scran. So good, so good. Um, I'm gonna get dressed now. <laughs> Just got out of the theater, enjoyable evening, always like to be the theater. One thing I've realized, I don't know if I've ever spoken about this, I hate more than anything in the world, and I'm aware this makes me a big old Grinch. I hate when the audience claps along. We Will Rock You is kind of separate to that because it's Queen, yeah, I'm gonna forgive it. No one ever claps in time with each other, with the actual beat. It stresses me out so much. If you like to clap, clap away, that's fine. You have your fun. I know that I'm a miser, but also, you're never gonna convince me <laughs> that a group of people looking silently at a stage, clapping on in unison, is not the most fucking terrifying thing in the world. Also, well done to the cast and everything like that.